But we'll want more. Hearken to this read for Lord. Grieving ever since was torn from its rushy bed of strength of impassioned love and pain, love and pain. Oh, Love and pain. The secret of my song, though near, none can see and none can hear. Oh, for the friend who knows the sign and mingles all his soul with mine. With mine, with mine, ooh, Two verses. <laughs> How was that? I'm um, for sound. Perfect. Oh my gosh, Perfect. sounds so good. Beautiful. Mm. Those are the opening lines of Rumi. Mm. Oh. I got, I got good sound actually. So, uh, hey, did I see uh, some Farish day? We might need to have a little uh, Hafiz here. I don't know, but if we can get her out of her um, twilight zone there. <laughs> get her to show up. She'll show up in about five minutes. Oh, okay. There you go. Anybody have any interesting stories or? Anything to share? Yes, we had the nicest little story from, uh, it, it was in the, uh, we were, uh, Gopi was talking about the, the Bujawi Arte. Oh my goodness, they are getting into the, we, the minute details about, um, oh, it's grammar, how, how best to, Ferris Day could tell you more, um, of, of, how best to write down the RT so that that we we can sing it easily um ah. beautiful beautiful uh, gopi has the most amazing voice i hadn't been on these programs before it was all new to me but uh i'm not sure i have the name right maruk uh Dadachanji, um told this little story about about the history of the parsi migration um uh, is this a good time to tell it? It's pretty short. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, she she explained that you know Persia, Iran was originally Zoroastrian, uh, and maybe other things too, but that was a predominant religion. And then uh, the Mughals, the Muslims came, and and, and there was an invasion, and then the, the so the the country was under Islamic rule, and they. Um, they basically said to the Zoroastrians, you have to convert or, or, or be killed. So she said, uh, and somebody who's heard this, correct me if I'm getting it wrong. They sent, uh, they took 21 ships from Persia sailing to India. And uh, most of those ships were lost with all of their books and cultural, all the history, really a great loss. Uh, two, two of those 21 ships made it oh, to God. Gujarat, to the uh, 
and she named the town and I've forgotten it must have been on the shore and so the um, the uh, leader the Zoroastrian leader explained to the king of the uh, I guess I don't know there might have been another name for his the ruler of the Gujarat territory who said we've we were come asking for refuge. We we uh, we uh, we basically were banished from our country. Will you accept us? And the king, the Gujarati king, said, uh, uh, said said no. He said that we they didn't. He didn't feel they could uh, accept uh, so many the the burden of so many foreigners in uh, in on their land. And so the Zoroastrian king. Uh, uh, leader said will you bring me a bowl of milk and so he did the uh, the uh, the Gujarati uh, the king gave, gave the, the Zoroastrian leader the, the milk and the Zoroastrian put a teaspoon of sugar into the milk stirred it around and said we will assimilate into your culture just as this sugar has 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 mixed into the milk. Um, I just thought it was such a great image. Yeah. And uh, so they did stay. Those were the Parsis, or the first Parsis. Um, and uh, then over time they prospered, and they're still part of the the culture. When when the Shah, uh, the last Shah was uh, it was was in power. He sent notice to the Parsis in India saying, we, we would welcome you back. This is your homeland. Come back. And so some did. Uh, and then, of course, the Shah was over, you know, was, was, there was a revolution. His rule was overturned. So once again, <laughs> the, the Zoroastrians were, <laughs> were uh, not welcome. So this was now the Ayatollah Khomeini, who so there was a second wave of um, of um, uh, migration, and those were the Iranis, um, and so that's what I remember. It's a nice little story, and this love she was a Dadachandi. Mar, I don't know if you know Maruk. I think was her name. Lovely lady. She's so that was, um, I mean, her name now is um, oh. Lindsay. Maruk Lindsay. That's uh, I don't know. Hoshang and Havobi's uh, daughter, maybe. Yeah. Her camera what? name was Maharuk. But uh, actually, I think that. Oh no, that's Guruk. Sorry. Yeah. Hmm. Well, there uh, there was another migration that came before that. Oh really? What, Baba's father, that the Iranis came. I don't know what, whether it was around the. The turn of the the early 1900s and they kept their culture and they kept their identity they didn't have to assimilate oh uh, oh that, that that's another whole migration uh, uh. <clears throat> because they didn't assimilate they were fairer skinned and the parsis uh -huh. like erich they were since they assimilated they were darker skinned interesting yeah. oh oh <clears throat> so is that, that Iranian right, Marinaz? Marinaz, is that the uh, approves? <clears throat> when did that second migration uh, The come? first uh, migration was about um, 600 years <clears throat> ago and the second one Jeff that you're talking about where um, Baba's father Shariar immigrated, um, that was not as a result of persecution. But the first migration 600 years ago, that was the result of persecution. Um, either you convert to Muslim religion or we kill you. Um, as far as how many ships were there and how many got lost, things not fresh in my mind, I don't know what Betty was saying. Um, but as far as the second immigration, that was not as a result of the persecution. Yeah. That's why I know for sure. Right. 
Yeah. Um, and yeah, as as we we know, we have read in the story that Sharia was his will to immigrate to India because he found or he was told that India is the land of spirituality, like he can find God by going to India. So that this is, and yeah, as far as um, fair skin, fair, more fair skin than uh, initial group, because they stayed there for generation after generation, of course. And intermarried, yeah. 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 <clears throat> Hey, so now we've uh, we've um, done enough. Now, now Ferris Day is we we've uh, killed enough time until we get to Hafiz here. So that was nice. I think, yeah, it's a beautiful story of the of those earlier cultures coming. All right. Yeah, that was wonderful. With. Um, Maruk telling us a story of her family and so forth. Um, okay, here I have Ghazal 64 in Gotsi. And um, just a few words in Farsi, or at least the first line. E berendan makon e zahede pakize seresht, kit gonahe de gari barto nachahand nevesht. I'm a little bit nervous amongst you know people who've left iran like yesterday <laughs> i left when i was 17 <laughs> so um i'll i'll keep it at that uh -huh. i'm not as fluent in speaking it as i used to be all right so the meaning do not find fault in the ways of the rend O oh, self-righteous religious ascetic, for they will not write another sins on your account. Whether I'm good or bad, what business is it of yours? In the end, each person will reap what they sow. Everyone is seeking the beloved, whether sober or drunk. The home of love is everywhere whether in the mosque or in the fire temple. My surrendered head and the dust of the tavern door, <clears throat> my surrendered head and the dust of the tavern door, if the claimant doesn't understand the meaning of this, then just say head and brick. Do not make me doubt the precedence from the first day of creation. What do you know about what is good and what is ugly behind the veil? It isn't just me who has fallen out of the Sufi house of abstinence. Even my father lost the eternal paradise. Do not rely on actions, O Khaje, for in the day of creation, how do you know what the pen of the maker wrote for your name. If your essence is goodness, then lo, you are good. If your nature is purity, lo, you are pure. The garden of Ferdos is subtle and delicate, but at noontime, appreciate this shade of the willow and the edge of the meadow. O oh, Hafez, if on the day of death, you catch a hold of a cup of wine, they will take you directly from the ruins to paradise. Beautiful. Hey, Baba. Now, a rend, give, give us the definition of rend in that first line. Say that first line well, again. Well, rend is somebody who Profligate. really paid. Yeah, I'll read the line. Don't find fault in the ways of the rend, O oh, self-righteous religious ascetic. For they will not write another's sins on your account. 
a rogue, a rand is a rogue, a, a person who pays no attention to uh, religious rituals, do's and don'ts, you know, proper conduct. Um, they pretty much will do what the heart dictates, whether that is socially acceptable or not. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of Baba lovers. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> We're yeah. not exactly conformists, for sure. No, no, not at all. Especially some thing. of them. <laughs> you know, some are more so than others. <laughs> you know, I was once at Baba's garden in the afternoon. It was a nice sunny day, and I was in there raking uh, in front of Baba's in front of the steps and um, I wasn't thinking about anything I was just you know kind of mindless and Baba flashed this to me with a sense of humor uh, and translating into English is funny it comes as just something in a millisecond but I I know exactly what Bob is saying but this is what he said he said no one can love me the way you do and then there's a pause, better than you do. No one can love me the way you do better than you do, because I'm the only one that loves them this way. So there's no comparison. You know, there, no one loves Bob the way Farish Day does, because you're the only one who loves him with that flavor. <laughs> so it's incomparable. So... And Baba likes all the different flavors. The, one flavor is not better than another flavor. That line reminded me, you know, like the profligate or the rand. He's got his own way. Yeah, and it's it's also talking about not judging good or bad, you know. Um, because uh, it's totally un unknown behind the scenes, behind the veil, what is what no. is good and bad. Yeah, no. it's it's it, it's all growth. Yeah. Some of it's yeah. slower, and some of it's a little faster. But we're we're getting there. We're reading uh, in Norina's um, transmissions from Baba through Norina that uh, really he stresses that try to see the good and the bad, you know? And in discourses, Baba says, bad, so called bad is just lesser degrees of good. As you said, yeah. Jeff, on its, uh -oh. way, yeah. on its way to being more what we yeah. consider good. I, I've, I, personally, I've always, want, I've always liked to see people for what they are and then, then learn to love them. <laughs> rather than than be blind to certain things i'd rather to see what's there and then make the effort to love you know yeah. hey um uh vj what vj's father had a very um intimate time with baba and you read about him in lord may hair and i don't know if i can get vj to share a little bit of his father's meeting with baba Although VJ seems to be pretty preoccupied with getting the chocolate chip cookies up on the top shelf. Uh, yeah, uh, Jai Bajar. Yeah. Can you hear me? The yeah. sound is sound is okay. How is it for everybody else? Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Anita is cleaning, so the, she has shifted me to other place. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so anyway, I just sit by the window. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, so my father, I will just tell, uh, my father, uh, Sulu Meshram, Baba compared him with uh, Sudama, and it's given in Lord Meher. Baba appreciated his love and faith, and uh, uh, 
Baba said that uh, Sulu has not seen my real form, but uh, he has that trust and faith in me. I appreciate that trust and he praised his head. So it is uh, given in Lord Mehar page uh, I, well, I will write later on. So his story goes like this. Uh, in nine, uh, at the age of 13, he's born in uh, 1924. And uh, his, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. Uh, so at the age of 13, uh, 1938, it was uh, 14 years age, when Baba visiting Nagpur with uh, Norina Match Belly, uh, he uh, that was in the news. It was a big news, you know. So it came in the newspaper, and he reads this uh, news, and uh, he was uh, really very much drawn because his background was like he was. Uh, a special boy who used to, uh, he was interested in meditation. He used to get into trance. And uh, so he was really drawn inwardly after reading the newspaper. And he went to Arich's house, uh, inquired. And uh, uh, then uh, he expressed his desire to oh, see meet Meher Baba and uh, yeah excuse me uh -huh. he expressed his desire to meet Meher Baba and uh, so uh, watching his curiosity Arach wrote to Baba that time Baba was at Panchagani and uh, uh, he was staying there at Panchagani with the Mandali. And uh, uh, Baba's the immediate answer comes from Baba that, okay, send him uh, to here, to Panchagani. And then uh, arrangements were made and he started for Panchagani. And Arach uh, dropped him at railway station, bought him ticket and gave him two packets of oranges to give it to Baba. And uh, 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 he spit goodbye, uh, gave him some Baba literature. Arach was there with his friend. So uh, yeah, then he, those days there was no direct train. And uh, he uh, left. So he has to change train at Kalyan and then catch another train for Pune, then get a bus from Pune to uh, Panchagani. Uh, at Kalyan, while getting down from the train, uh, a train stopped at outer and he thought it was a railway, a railway station. So when he got down with orange packets first, uh, the train moved. And his bag and his suitcase was gone in the, it started moving in the train and it gone. And he was just left with two orange packets. He was really very sad. And somehow he managed to come to Pune uh, railway station. And uh, from Pune railway station, he came out. Uh, so there was a bus standing. Uh, at a distance, he walks to the bus and he talked to the bus driver that uh, he wants to go to Panchagani to see Mehar Baba and that his bag and baggage is lost. And uh, so driver said, uh, yeah, I knew Mehar Baba. He was a gardener at uh, Baba's bungalow and later on he became driver. So he said, yes, he trusted his story of this boy, young boy. And uh, he uh, said, uh, okay, hop on, I will drop you. It was three uh, around 3 p.m. 
So by the evening, in two and a half hours, he reached uh, Panchagani. He dropped him there, and uh, there was he found a Jal, Jal Vava's younger brother. Uh, he was there with the car. Vava sent him to bring this boy, and uh, with orange packets. So he came to him and said, "Yeah, I will take you to Vava." And then they reached Baba's bungalow, where Baba. So when he reached there, he saw Muhammad Mast was there uh, at the veranda. Baba was not there, and uh, Adi's mother, Gai Mai, uh, and uh, so uh, uh, after some time, Baba comes there. and uh, he immediately fell down at baba's feet and gave the present of those oranges and then he described his story also that uh, baba i lost everything on the way and uh, baba said what orange packets were with, with him so baba i smiled yeah and said he <laughs> lose everything but don't lose me and and yeah, then he calls vishnu master and ask him to take this boy for uh, dinner and make arrangements for his stay at the nearby quarter so vishnu takes him to a gujarati lodge and uh, feeds him and then arranges his stay in the nearby quarters and in the early morning when he was uh, taking his bath there was a knock at the door and it was gustav ji who was keeping silence he knocked the door and uh, i say sulu sulu baba is calling and actually he has not completed the bath he was still wet he started his bath and uh, say so come immediately so he my father rushed immediately he was like also he was occupied with the thoughts of baba and so he rushed to baba's place mandli hall where baba was there in the room sitting with his disciples and he just went there in a wet underpants and he just stood there with folded hands and baba looked at him and he smiled <laughs> simply said his simplicity and uh, then uh, baba asked him what were you thinking last night did you sleep well and what were your thoughts last night so my father was occupied with his uh, thoughts only he said baba all night i was thinking about you meeting you in the naked and uh, i was sing uh, chanting some sanskrit shlokas and uh, singing in your praise and baba looks at him and says fit for the path he was very pleased to see him he kept him for uh, two days there and uh, then uh, Uh, he made him sit one day under the tree ask him to meditate for one hour and uh, then later on his meditation he was so addicted to medi- uh, meditation that seven to eight hours he used to Oh, do meditation every day every day my god <laughs> i was really surprised i can't do meditation Uh, but not even a uh, say half an hour is okay chanting baba's <laughs> name but uh, 40 minutes yeah at the most yeah so uh, then baba kept him for two days he gave him instructions some instructions and uh, those instructions i will read i could get his uh, actually he wrote his experience in 1959 adi asked him to publish that so i could get those writings sold of him luckily and so 
that what he wrote uh, in those pages and say that uh, never to t- baba told uh, told him never to tell lie never to do any lustful action never to eat meat fish eggs never to hammer anyone he has written means harass anyone or uh, yeah a shout at any never give thought to lust anger greed hatred under any situation never smoke nor take alcoholic drinks meditation one hour one hour writing of om para brahma baba daily so i've been observing him every day uh, daily writing uh, uh, chanting baba's name while i am sleeping watching him sitting <laughs> by the court <laughs> chanting singing and med- yeah meditation so in 1941 he got a job he was at nagpur and uh, he moved to jabalpur at ordnance factory jabalpur and uh, uh, he was as a clerk he started his career and uh, then uh, um, uh, uh, he used to contact from there to baba t- time to time and that i will mention it is given in the lord mahar also so 1940 44 baba called him at saunair uh, yeah so i am telling that at uh, panchagani baba then after keeping two days baba asked jal kera wala to drop him at uh, pune uh, uh, and then from pune uh, he was uh, departed by train bought him ticket that that those days ticket was like 9 rupees 40 paisa and my father was very happy uh, that uh, he whatever he wanted in worldly he received and he realized that baba is god Uh, he felt that oh because he knew my, my thoughts i wanted to meet him naked always he was impressed with the jain sadhus digambar sadhus and uh, those uh, like upasni maharaj was also naked so half naked so he was re- he wanted to meet him like that and baba gave him darshan like that and uh, Uh, told him fit for the path he was really happy he comes back and then he goes to rhs house to give him feedback and uh, yeah so he was really happy so when he then when he gets call from jabalpur ordnance factory he moved there and in 1944 baba when baba visited him it's uh, it's nagpur he called him there come for a week and he took him to saunair and uh, then gave him instruction to keep silence for every sundays and it so happened that after coming back uh, to jabalpur when he started uh, uh, maintaining silence Uh, he was unable to break his silence he continued for uh, three weeks continuous so then baba called him at uh, maharajad and he was escorted by one uh, ram lakhan sharma and then baba asked him made, made him break his silence yeah. that uh, baba told him i will send you to back to himalaya <laughs> uh, so then he, his silence was broken and uh, again in 1945 baba called him at zubli hills hyderabad and uh, to, uh, to we prepared for two months and uh, to stay for two months so he went there and in baba's presence he used to get into ecstasy and he was keen on getting god realization so baba uh, at hyderabad he was there baba was at jubilee hills some uh, 
royal place and uh, uh, again there uh, somebody received him from the railway station and uh, uh, so then baba asked him baba wanted him to live with him as a mandali so baba asked him uh, would you like to stay with me permanently uh, and then and tell me tomorrow so then next day uh, my father said baba he has some reservation like he had job and uh, uh, parents approval was not there so he said baba my mother might take uh, objection uh, so baba says okay then you stay there and uh, he uh, baba like a non resident mandali and uh, keep in touch with me so then he kept him only for two days and uh, sent him back he say staying with god when for two days is equivalent to two months so now you are two months finished go back get merry and uh, uh, have your worldly life so he comes back and dj uh, yeah why don't you make this part 1 of your yeah, dad's yeah, story sure. Sure, sure, sure. And we will get um, and and remember where you left off, okay. so we can um, <clears throat> sure, sure find out how the uh, at that point how things unfolded. Okay, okay, okay. Jai Baba. Beautiful. Jai Baba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Yeah, Jai Baba. Yeah, yeah. That's we're good. we're gonna get your uh, we're gonna get the full story. Sure. And and eventually how how your relationship was with your dad okay okay yeah that okay. would be sure nice. <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> <laughs> good yeah. yeah anybody um ganesh has come on the scene here and alan yes. i'm alan is back in there somewhere be hiding behind baba oh there he is <clears throat> So this was one of the uh, stories that you hear in in Lord Mayhair. You'll you'll run across it in reading it, Sule. <clears throat> so what's um, you know when Baba was up on uh, when Baba would be at Lower Maribad and the women were up on the hill. When he came up in the afternoon, he would go like this, and they'd have to tell him who was fighting today. <laughs> Usually two people, and that would be part of the entertainment. They would have to face each other, and and you know vent their complaints and everything, and they'd kind of go at it. And then, then Bob would make them brace at the end. And and Rano Rano said sometimes the farthest distance she ever traveled was that few steps over to have to embrace somebody that. She was at such odds in such conflict with. <clears throat> that's that's the way Baba was. <clears throat> Alan, you got anything? Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, well, that what that reminds me of um, when I was when I've been um, just. Just reflecting uh, with Baba about about the the nature of glimpses versus how uh, well not versus but but how these glimpses or you know when when you're on on the on the path how the glimpses um, become more permanent rather than glimpses like when do they go from just being glimpses and deeper experiences to lasting, everlasting, uh, every day, sitting with him and being with him in everything that you do, really, you know. Um, and I think, it, I know it's a slow process, and, uh, uh, you know, there's literally lifetimes of suffering and everything, but um, 
I also am, I, I get inspired sometimes to get sparks of inspiration from just the the, the idea that um, you know it's possible to touch in and be with Baba in any moment, every moment, and it's not the and it's not far fetched or or even stupid to think that you can be with him right now and it doesn't require his physical form and only to drop into that deepest part of your heart so how how that's what that's sort of the 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 topic at hand glimpses uh and how they become more everlasting more abiding uh yeah yeah well bobby used the term baba when, when he met with um, I forgot his name. I think it was Charles Purdom. I, th I was, so it was one of them where, where, where he said something along the lines of like, remember all of this is illusion. And, um, the, you know, God is found within. And then, and then he responded, you know, Charles responded to something like, yes, I know I've had deep, I've had some deep experiences. I've touched in on some deeper experiences and then Baba re replied something like, yes, but um, I'm talking about those experience. I'm talking about those experiences being permanent. So the permanence of, of that, I guess is what he, what he's talking about is like God realization, but that's, that's kind of another thing. Yeah. I mean, to, to, be able to glimpse Baba within. I mean, all that we do as, as far as remembering him and seeing the movies and the photographs and everything, eventually, over time, we will, we will see Baba within. Not just as a photograph, but even moving around. Um, but it, it, it all, there's a lot of stuff that's got to get cleared away. You know, a lot of stuff that's that uh, is covers the blo blocks the vision from the heart. I mean, it's it's there's an eye of the heart that Darwin used to talk about, and th it's through that eye that you can actually see Baba. Mm. Uh, it's different from the mind's eye; it's the heart's eye. But we, um, but any I, I mean, any time you're thinking of Baba you're focusing on the real anything connected with Baba is the real it, you know so that's all in the right territory eventually the real will start to become more and more permanently real you know um, but any little glimpse that you get you know just you keep expanding on it and uh, I remember uh, Fred Winterfeld was was you know old time Baba person and he had these two chairs. He'd get up in the morning and he had two chairs. I, I actually have one of them. He would sit in the morning and he he was he lived in, on the center and he you know back then there was a nearby community maybe a. a 100 150 of us at that point but he would sit in this chair and met you know go into a deep state and baba would appear in the chair next to him hmm. and they would actually have conversations about how different ones in the community were doing you know if someone were there's a divorce was happening or somebody was suffering and everything he would talk with baba about uh, uh, with Baba about them. And it was uncanny what Fred knew about the, uh, you know, the troubles in the, in this big Baba family in Myrtle Beach. So there is, there's somebody who reached that point where he could actually see and converse with Baba. That's not impossible. Uh, I mean, seeing him as a man, not as light, not Baba's divine side, but Baba's human side. Yeah. <clears throat> and that is, it, it's, 
that's awaiting us. That kind yeah. of intimacy is is to put your put your sights on that, so to speak. You know. Yeah, yeah. I think that's it. it that's an it, for me. It's very important because um, focusing or 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 you know, I I guess I'm speaking in terms of like when I'm not uh, in a Baba group or something. Or I'm, you know, I'm not with around people who, who are talking about Baba, and it's the more personal or intimate and more intense chaotic moments in my life where I, I start, I'm, I guess, experimenting with, well, where are you now, Baba? Where are you now? And this, like, in that moment, you know, like, like if if I'm in the middle of a intense conversation, or if I'm feeling strong winds of anger or lust or greed or whatever it is then um it's like i find that i can't compartmentalize the specific i can't compartmentalize the specific issue and 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 what i mean is like i, I don't have an experience of anger and then i think to myself Oh, Baba, please help me with this anger. You know, please take this anger away or something. Instead of doing that, or th or thinking I need to like pray it away or something, it's more of a it's more of a enjoying enjoying that experience, that strong sensation, into the longing for the intensity, the longing for Baba, for being with him, for you know that 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 feeling that I I really want to be with him and there's nothing else really that I really want more than that in the deepest heart of myself. It's just, that's, you know, you so you know what I mean? You kind of enjoy that sensation that you're having, whatever it is, or if it's a strong thought or a strong feeling or whatever's happening, somebody's yelling at you or talking to you weirdly, you, you enjoy it in your heart space with that longing, with that intensity. And it seems like to me, lately like that it it takes care of it on all levels rather than just that specific issue of, of dealing with it i don't know if that makes sense I, i'm trying to, to say it out loud <clears throat> no but uh that, that's a great great longing to have you know i mean that that'll carry you there to a great intimacy with baba i would say you know i i don't know if this might relate to especially you and ganesh I wrote something up, <clears throat> and um, yes, this was a uh, this was an exchange I had with Erich, and um, there it it's what can I say? It has a <clears throat> it's one way of looking at Baba that that was very helpful to me, and it, it may be, uh, you may find it works for you. So here's what I wrote. <clears throat> I, I titled it "Turn Off the Remembrance," "Turn Off the Remembrance Machine." Sometimes there was a time in 1975 before I started working at the Mayor Center, when I was working for Price Branches Construction Company, and we were doing house painting, some fine interior jobs over in Briarcliff Acres, just north of the center. In this upscale neighborhood, you had to do quality work. Back then, I would describe myself as a Baba remembrance machine. I would say Baba, Baba, Baba inwardly with each brush stroke, cutting in windows and baseboards with Baba's name. I worked for six months, and then Price and I went to India. <clears throat> One day, we were sitting just outside Mondale Hall on a bench with Erich, and Price said, Erich, I work as a house painter, and sometimes hours go by and I haven't thought about Baba. He is the most important being in the world, and time has gone by and I'm not even remembering him. What can I do about that? Erich replied, <clears throat> In the beginning, it's important to remember Baba, to say his name, to see, to see the movies, to go where Baba has been, and to read all the Baba literature. But in time... 
it becomes important to forget yourself. When you forget yourself, then Baba can live through you. You're not aware of it, but he is living through you. He underlined the supreme value of self-forgetfulness. One second. It was a turning point in my life with Baba because I had become a bit rigid in remembering him all the time. I had lost the playfulness that I had always that had always been a part of me since since childhood, the wide range of enthusiasm of my college days, the genuine fun of life. Since that time, <clears throat> I have found that self-forgetfulness and remembering Baba make a vital and complementary dynamic in my inner life. Erich would say, get wholeheartedly lost in your activities. And when coming out of that absorption, remember Baba. And he would add, when you remember to remember, remember him. So this is how I translate Baba's words <clears throat> into my life. When I get into something such as volleyball or music or gardening, I forget myself. Then Baba can live through me. And after the activity, I remember him. So it's an alternating between remembrance and self-forgetfulness. I found if it's all Baba remembrance, I would become a little stiff and unnatural. And if it's all self-forgetfulness, then, then I can sometimes, uh, that, that can also sometimes be unbalanced. Self-forgetfulness and Baba remembrance for me work beautifully together. Um, let's see. That awareness freed me up to do a lot of things on the center that might not technically be considered Baba. Baba-like games, skits, jokes, and movies, because in them we forget ourselves. Like gardening, you can forget yourself among flowers and hours fly by. It's heavenly. I asked Margaret Crass dancers, most of whom were deeply devoted to Baba, if they remembered him out on the stage in the midst of their performances. This was ba ballet at its highest level at the time. They all said that they remembered Baba before their performance and afterwards, but then they lost themselves in their dance performance. They had all tried at one time to remember Baba during their performance, but they confessed that it took away from the dance. So, anyway, that's, uh, I don't know if that makes, uh, if you can relate to that. Yes, yes. <clears throat> In other words, you don't want to you don't want to kind of be doing your work and then and then uh, always feeling bad because you haven't remembered Bob. You know. But when you when you but Eric said when you remember to remember, then remember Bob remember him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, I mean now that's not exactly what you're saying uh but i mean uh, that's that's not really doesn't kind of isn't really responding to what you were saying alan exactly but it does kind of free the consciousness up <clears throat> so that if you do want to explore seeing baba within i would say you're in a, a more of a freed up state to go on that quest <clears throat> yeah i think that relates because i thought about it when you're saying the the self-forgetfulness and uh, remembering him it's almost like in a sense when the more that i for me personally i mean i can only speak for myself but <clears throat> when i remember him in the midst of of uh, uh you know heavy activity or uh whatever it is that i'm doing um it's like i'm still i'm still talking how i'm talking or i'm still you know talking intensely or or quietly or whatever it is i'm doing uh and it's not in the state of like um where you're tr trying you're trying to like um like you mentioned the rigidity of like meditate you know like meditation and where you're you're like trying to keep keep up the um 
keep it up and it, it, it can drive you nuts and, and be, feel uptight like a broomstick up your butt or something. But like, <laughs> I, I, I've definitely felt that um, when I was kind of more on the meditation path. But, but I mean, it's like this remembrance of him, the, the, it's like those glimpses that you talk about, like where, where, you, where you'll be doing something and all of a sudden it's like by his grace, you just like look over or something. You look over at a picture or you look over and something like the light shines a sp specific way and then you realize for just a split second that like all of this is kind of like a big play or something and then you just like it just loosens up the the pressure cooker a little bit for me and i forget myself and i forget how seriously i'm taking myself in the moment as well like you mentioned you know like you can take yourself so seriously especially when someone's you know telling you you did something wrong especially and and it helps for me when somebody's like <laughs> You know, I have all the, I have a whole list of why, I, you know, I'm really good at it. I could, I mean, I can, I could be like a lawyer and be like, here's point one through 10 of how I am correct on this point. And here's the evidence of all of the issues that you're claiming that I did wrong. You're not right. <laughs> like I could do that, but I am trying to look at the situations more and more where somebody will say, hey, Alan, you really didn't you know, you, you were responsible for this and you didn't do it. So, you know, it's like, you really should try a little bit harder next time. Okay. And when I, when I hear a comment like that, I feel like that's, I can feel Baba's kind of like, he's embodying in that person in that moment and pointing and touching that spot in me where I really don't want to be touched. And just for that split moment, you know, if I can, ha if I have that grace of his, his love, he'll just kind of flip the switch. Like, like you were mentioning, was it you, Jeff? Is some, something about the play where he takes the mask off? A dream somebody had yeah. where he's the whole, he's everybody. And so he's like, how serious can I take it? Uh, you know, and, and then it helps though, because then I can say, I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. You're right. I I made a mistake and, I, and I'll try to do better next time. Even though I feel the burning of my emotions and my sensations of like, damn you. Like, <laughs> I just feel the burning but I'm not enacting on them. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I took, because I'm remembering him and he's like, who do you think is running the show? Who do you think is this, this whole thing? And um, I don't know for, for yeah. me that, that that's kind of the. Yeah. yeah you get yeah. some space between your consciousness and your reactions. Yes. You know, and that, that's the beautiful place. Yeah. But it's I also want... taking time for it. I once said to I once said to to Bao Kalchuri, we were in the old pilgrim center, and I said, um, you know, you tell it you tell us these stories about how Baba would come in there and hammer you, he'd find fault with you, or he'd ignore you and everything. I said if I, I would find that very difficult to have Baba blasting me, and still be ready uh, to serve him. You know, I mean, to be still to snap out of it and, and be functional. What was the attitude that you and, and the Mandalay had to have around Baba? And uh, Ted Judson was there. He was the, the two of us were there. And Bao said, this is the attitude that you had to have around Baba. But, I mean, it, it even pertains to today. This is the attitude you had to have about, around Baba. Whether you were right or you are wrong, you are always wrong. And what he said is, because if you were ever really right, you, would, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be here anymore. So he said the ego can perpetuate itself through being right or being wrong. So... The whole idea of right or wrong, as long as, I mean, even Eric said that. I mean, the fact that I'm, Eric said, the fact that I'm still here means that I'm, <clears throat> I don't know what I'm doing. If I knew what I was doing, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here talking to you. So, I mean, it's just, it kind of puts these things in a larger context. But yeah. when when Barrow said, you know, whether you're right or wrong, you're always wrong, uh, uh, Ted Judson and I just, we howled with laughter. I mean, what kind of world is that? <laughs>
but that was that would much be relevant when you are with a master when you are with this when you are with the avatar not when you are on the outside world and you can and and i am wrong i am wrong we can't go with that attitude right so it's it's just very specific oh. with with baba i think it pertains right now i i mean i, I don't think it's you have to be around baba <laughs> the fact that i'm still here i'm doing something wrong i don't mean i don't get i don't have a low self esteem because i'm i'm still here and I, and it's obvious that i must be doing something wrong but it 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 kind of keeps you humble in the sense that if you really hit the right note you would disappear you know and the fact that that i'm here means that you know i've got some um <clears throat> i've bought into something <laughs> that's that's way off and here i am i think i think it's Ganesh, when you're when you're saying that I, I mean i reminds me of like not that i would say i, I don't know how to exp, i don't know if yeah. i'm explaining well i mean you right. have to be practical I, I right mean, yeah if you like if somebody's really job, wrong yeah <laughs> you gotta you gotta say hey yeah. that's not right you know you gotta be no. yes <laughs> yes you can't tell your boss you know there's no such thing as right or wrong buddy yeah 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 you'll be, you'll be out of there yeah i mean this particular circumstances right where you know that you can kind of give you could be the one to give in a little bit and the situation can roll a little smoother with everyone feeling a little bit better if you were to just say sorry or if you were to kind of take the punch or something sometimes it's like I can feel yes, that when, yes. when that moment comes where I'm like, I really could take this and just run with it, but I'm going to just, I'm going to let it go. Let it go. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's not wisdom. fun. It's not fun. Yeah. But yeah. I think it's, it's when you're with Baba, you, you can say that, yes, I might, what uh, just Jeff told, like, I'm not right and all that. But when I'm out in the world, um, means i can i can be in that state inwardly but not yeah. express that outwardly yeah exactly it's it's an inner knowing uh um, but it may not uh, uh it might be a little impractical to express it outwardly there's a heck of a lot of things that mm. you can know inwardly but uh you you can't you can't divulge it externally Priya, what do you think? I was just about to ask you a question. Oh, go ahead. Uh, you spoke about uh, the forgetfulness of the self. Yeah. And I was wondering, how do you really inculcate forgetfulness? How do you what? Inculcate. How do you create a space for forgetfulness, you know? <clears throat> You say forgive yeah. and forget, do good and forget. And Baba has uh, spoken extensively about true forgetfulness. Yeah. And but so oddly enough, if you get wholeheartedly, when you get wholeheartedly into things, where you, you know, things that you really love and enjoy, you, you actually forget yourself. It's, it's not some esoteric state. You know, if you uh, enjoy take, giving your uh, a, a dog a walk, on, you know, take him out in the morning with your dog and you enjoy the way he scampers around and everything, I'm just making this up. But that can be such a delight to your heart. You're actually kind of forgetting yourself in this little scene, taking your dog for a walk in the park. It's not, doesn't have to be anything elevated. You know what I mean? It's, it can yes. be very. It can be uh, anything that you get into wholeheartedly, and forget your that you forget yourself. I but think. But then, when you come out of that absorption, then, then, just remember. Make sure you know. Remember, Bob. You know. So which big? Back to the next question, Jim. Oh, 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 uh, Namita. Okay, down there. Hello. I, yeah, I got. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, I said which begs the next question, Jeff. According to me, like, 
this is about Eraj. You just mentioned that he said, to, 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 you know, to remember to remember. So when you actually say remember to remember, is Eraj talking about remembering just from the, you know, from is, is Raj talking about, you know, the remembrance that comes from the heart? Is he saying that, you know, just in, in case you forget, you, you, you just got lost and you just think, okay, okay, I have to remember Baba, that's enough. So what is this remember Baba? I mean, what does it really, really mean for each one of us? I'm sure it must be different or is it the same thing? <clears throat> Well, it, it kind of depends on uh, what you're most drawn to in Baba. I mean, like I, I and a lot of us uh, really enjoy Baba's personality. So when you come out of, say, an absorption in something, you're, you're wholehearted about something, and then you kind of, you know, you've, you've been playing volleyball, and then you're kind of walking off, and you have kind of some space. Um, I could think about dinner or I could think about, you know, any number of things or that I lost that last game. I, but I, 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 I have an opportunity to remember. So remember the part of Baba that you're most drawn to in that moment. You know, it might be, you know, it might be uh, thinking about him in a certain time in his life or... It might be picturing him. It might be saying his name inwardly. Uh, it might be thinking about the his radiance. It, it's kind of what you're most attracted to in that moment uh, about Baba. That's I mean that's the the uh, the, uh, the sense I got from Erich. Jeff, yeah, can I say something? Actually, uh, in God Speaks, Baba mentioned about forgetfulness, and that is in a deeper sense. Uh, that yeah. is forgetfulness of a mind, not just a daily activity of brains here in our daily life. That uh, mm. and uh, uh, that, like uh, the past memories. Uh, when a body takes a, when soul takes another body and it forgets the memories of the previous lives so that is also a deeper meaning of the forgetfulness yeah and yeah uh, you're talking about um, forgetfulness with a, a capital f <clears throat> yeah. but to work up to that that larger forgetfulness all these little forgetfulnesses help to contribute to that larger self-forgetfulness mm -hmm. and that larger remembrance mm -hmm. of seeing Baba within, you know, that's different from, you know, uh, reading about his life, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that, that, that remembrance is with a capital R and that we're, but we're work, we're all working toward those, uh, that intimate experience. Yeah. But Namita, did that um Yeah. Did that make sense to you or um no, I think I am actually the the two two things here that I want to once again maybe you know just ask from my end. One is uh so again, is this is this is this remembrance got to be you know, sometimes when you're occupied and, and, you know, or like, you know, Alan was citing the certain situations that are happening and, you know, you, you, you are not going to at that particular moment in the midst of it, be able to just, you know, like completely throw it out or, or, or just ignore it or whatever and, and come back to send the center. So was Iraj actually saying when you remember to remember, was he actually saying that this is also okay if you know you just have a like a flash you know baba's name and it could be from the mind but it doesn't necessarily have to be connected to your heart that's you know that's one question i had yeah so well, and there uh, is another one so maybe that if first you can one, address this then i will ask the next yeah. one i mean ideally it's 
much richer to be able to, to remember Baba at the heart level than up, than up in the head. But, hey, either one is great. Baba, Bob will take any remembrance, <laughs> whether it's up in the head or in the heart. But for us, it's richer and has more substance to remember Baba from the heart. <clears throat> but, hey, sometimes I would be so uh, overworked in, in situations before I worked at the center that I had just yeah. only a capable of a thin remembrance of Baba. You know, just to say his name, I couldn't, uh, you know, it, it was very thin, but it's the best I could do in those moments. Out here, Jeff, could you once again, I, I know I knew you've repeated this many times, but I would, I would, I mean, I wish I could actually record this for myself. Can you once again just explain how to get from the mind to the heart and how to stay in that feeling place that you always talk about? Yeah, I mean, are there any other questions in the meantime? I'll, 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 I won't forget that. <clears throat> okay. Hey, yeah, Jeff. Yeah. You know, uh, it's like, yeah. you know, um, I, I'm caught up in whatever it is I'm doing, or I may not even be doing anything. I'm just relaxing in something, and I'm not thinking of Baba. And then it's like he creeps into my mind and says, hey, you haven't remembered me, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, and I say, oh my gosh, I've not thought of Baba. And then I just maybe repeat his name or I just think about him. But is that from the mind or from the heart? Well, I mean, it depends on where you're feeling it. <clears throat> but, you know, it, it yeah, it depends. I mean, if you're feeling it from the heart, your consciousness is down in the heart area. But either yeah. way, I mean, it, any remembers of Baba, he can, he get, if he gets your attention, even the attention of your mind, it's, it's invaluable for him and invaluable for you. <clears throat> if you're able to remember him from the, at the heart level, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's, can be even uh, more fulfilling. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Because I started feeling guilty about it, you know. Oh my God, I haven't thought of Baba, you know, <laughs> all all day maybe, or even you know, for whatever time it was. Well, Baba said this about meditation, and I think it pertains here. That <clears throat> it say if you're meditating, and uh, you, then you you kind of get distracted. <clears throat> Don't worry about the fact that you got distracted. Come back to the object of meditation at your earliest convenience. And don't say, oh, why did I forget? Oh, why did I go there? What was I thinking about? Just come back to Baba. And yeah. then if your mind drifts off somewhere and daydreams, you know, don't say, oh, why did I, why did I daydream? Just come back. You know, that's what Baba said. Just <clears throat> come back at your earliest convenience. <clears throat> okay, thank you. You know, one time Baba asked uh, Bao Kao Shuri, you know, to say, say his name. He had all the mandali doing this for a period of time. There was a reason for it. And uh, he found it very disturbing because he'd be saying Baba's name, but his mind would be going all over the place, you know. <clears throat> and he was just fair, kind of upset. And, uh, and later on, I think when he did Night Watch, you know, Baba asked how it went. And he said, well, Baba, I couldn't, <clears throat> I'd be saying Baba's name, but thoughts were coming. I was being pulled away. And Baba said, but... What did I ask you to? I, I asked you just to say my name. I didn't say not to have all these thoughts. You know, you were you were saying my name. <clears throat> I didn't say don't have any distracted thoughts. <clears throat> they are going to be there. <clears throat> yeah, they always you know? are. Yeah. So just yeah, just come back to Baba in one one form or another that works for you. That's my. That's what I gathered. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. So, <clears throat> you know, yeah, good. Yes. in the earlier ages, yeah. I was wondering, did, did Baba ever talk about 
uh, not ever coming, you know, uh, his avataric form being, in, you know, in the feminine, like he never came down to earth as a woman. Did you ever <clears> talk <throat> about that? No, but this is something I heard from from um, <clears throat> Adi, Baba, you know, Adi, the Adi K. Arani, Baba's secretary. Now, Adi was uh, an expert on God Speaks. <clears throat> he knew it back and forward. And one thing that Baba says in there is that, <clears throat> that the avatar has, uh, has a circle of people that play certain roles. There, and he said there's someone that plays the role of Peter, someone that plays the role of John. <clears throat> the different, these are different roles. And each time a new person plays this role. So at the time of, uh, uh, in this advent, Erich played the role of Peter. And Val Kalchuri played the, Baba said, played the role of John. <clears throat> but that, then, but then it's only occupied for a lifetime and then someone else occupies that. <clears throat> and in God Speaks, Baba says that's always, you know, that's the case. But one day, Baba said to uh, to Adi that Mera is always the same one. So she was Radha and Sita and Mary. She's always the same one. And it's interesting because because uh, someone told me that Mera said uh, told them that that she was al always a woman. So she she uh, she's always here. So she's Baba's counterpart, and she's always here the same way Baba is here. Why is God? Huh? Yeah, but why is God always referred to as He? Why do we <clears throat> always say He? Why is it always yeah. the masculine, and why doesn't He ever come as the feminine? That is <clears throat> that does beg a question. Well, He does come as the feminine as as mara <clears throat> but somehow i mean this is my feeling that in this historical period <clears throat> is very male dominated but i would say uh i'm now this is just my opinion in, in the future sometime mara <clears throat> will have a more prominent role and baba baba might have a lesser role as it's as it's manifested in the world, even though they're identical. <clears throat> that that would be like saying, why does why does Mara always come as a woman? <laughs> but Thanks, but Jeff. right. I don't think people are ready. I don't think they're quite ready for a feminine avatar meaning somebody who is always always yeah. here you need a heavier now, now don't i mean you can quote me on this but i mean i'm i'm just this is just my feeling based on you know my experience i spent a lot of time with mara and i never met anyone like mara she was a a, a, a different being from Erich kind of came from the muck up, but Mara came from heaven down. That was my experience. Wow. Can you share with us some of your uh, memories with Mara? Um, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> the feeling I had with Mara, <clears throat> I mean, just describe her. It's like if you imagined <clears throat> a, a, a building, a house that had windows all around. And when you went into this building, there were no internal walls. You could go through uh, into Mara's being through one side and out the other. There was not that vortex of, a, of an ego in there. It was all, the interior was all like a warm ocean, you might say. 
not like anybody that I had ever encountered. Even though she was just very natural and and all of that, but her inwardly, she was so uh, so beautiful. So Jeff, yeah, Jeff, you yeah. said that she's never been a man. She's always been a woman ever. Yeah. Always, her soul never had an experience like we all do. We experience everything. We experience male and female. Yeah. She never had experience of being a male. That's yeah, right. what you think. Yeah. Ever. And I think, and I think Baba I never she's had more an advanced soul. Now she's very advanced soul. That's what she said, and and Baba's never had. But an before experience she as a woman. was like uh, an advanced. Experience. Wow. Yeah, I mean, like Baba has never had a a, a, a form as a woman, and I think Mara's never had a form as a man. <clears throat> I mean, so that's. I'm just saying that, you know, uh, that's <laughs> what I gathered. Jeff. Yeah. This is this is now Nasrina speaking. Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, Baba said. Avatar always comes in a male form. Yeah. It's either mm -hmm. the inner God speaks or yeah. some other. <clears throat> and yeah. many times Baba said that. Yeah. He but, said why? Nasrin. <clears throat> Baba uh -huh. said why? Baba why? did he say all is the male? Yes. The avatar. Okay. Always yeah. avatar comes in. I know, but his, did he say why? He explained. No, no explanation. No. no. Yeah. <clears throat> and but, and Mara said she's always a woman, but she never said why. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I have a I have a story about Mehra. If, if yeah, so. go for it. You know, because uh, you mentioned that Mehra is is just. Uh, you know, he's all, she's always here and she's Baba's counterpart. Um, once I went to uh, India and it was in the morning when I went to Mira's shrine and bowed down, I was thinking to myself, uh, Baba said, Mira is always here. I, I don't know if uh, I, I am, if, if it is, uh, you know, correct or not. I was, uh, you know, uh, suspicious about it. But that day I went to Merazar uh, in the morning and uh, it was a, a lots of people. This I'm talking about many years ago. There was a lot of people coming to, to Merazar. All of the sudden between all these people, Casey, which I didn't know her and she didn't know me and she ran to run to me and hold my hands and said, I need to tell you something. I said, yes. She took me very fast in Mira's room and showed me her bed, you know, which is a, a picture of her. And always, uh, you know, she, she brings flower, you know, put it on her Mira's picture. And she told me, when I went this morning that early, at, you know, the, the time that I was thinking about Mera in, in Bob, Mera's shrine. So she said it was early in the morning. I usually uh, clean up the, the picture and everything. And I put a rose for Mera. And this morning when I went to Mera's to do uh, the flower and everything, I saw your image in her eyes. Oh. Oh, wow. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Yes. I forget. Casey, I, yes, it said that Casey saw your image on her on Mara's eyes. Yes. You know, it wow. was the time that I was thinking if Mara is eternal like Baba, you know, or not. I, I had a question. Beautiful. Oh, my God. You guys hey, are there. amazing. <laughs> There you yes. have it a little bit. 
<laughs> wow, the level of communication between you guys are like above and beyond. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's beyond me. <laughs> I am very lucky. I was I was there wow. when I was there when at Maribad when Mariza, when Mara passed on. And um and people, you know, when she was brought to the tomb and there was the photograph of Baba at the back, there used to be a photograph and people were seeing, uh, they would see Baba and then it would change to Mara, then it would be Baba and then it would change to Mara and then Baba. Mm. I don't think that happened with any of the other Mandali, but it was going back and forth. Mm. And so it was almost like they're one and the same. Did you see it as well, Jeff? No, I didn't see it. I didn't see that. But um, <clears throat> there's. A, I'll tell you a story that's kind of beautiful. There was a <clears throat> a, a woman who lived in uh, Georgia, and um, she was a Cherokee Indian background, but she grew up as a Catholic <clears throat> and very and poor. And she had children, and but her great solace in life was uh, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. And so she grew up, and that was very dear to her and support in a very difficult life that she had. She had four children and no husband, and it was very difficult. <clears throat> and um, she was kind of her protector. And then uh, she uh, later on she heard of Baba, and she uh, came to India. And one day Mara, Mara used to take people out around the back of the main house there, and there would be herbs and and vegetables and everything. And so uh, Mara was there with a, a, an umbrella, <clears throat> and they were walking around. And at one point, uh, Mara stopped and. And uh, this woman, Maureen, was in front of her. And Mara said, I've always been helping you. And so she knew, wow, this was the Mara, Mary that she had, had, had always turned to as she was growing up to help her in, in all the difficulties of her life. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. My goodness. <clears throat> Mara said it to her that yeah. she was always helping her. Yeah, I've always been helping. And you. this woman was devoted to Virgin. Yeah. Virgin and this Mary. woman was devoted to Virgin Mary. Yeah. <clears throat> so all these things kind of wow, that's so are beautiful. kind of telling. <laughs> I don't know what. <clears throat> but now let's get back to Namita. I gotta check the time. Yes. We'll, we'll get Namita. Uh, uh, she she wanted to know how do you get from the head Three's down old. to the heart. Or maybe she went off to have a milkshake or something. Oh, I'm here. Oh, you're here. <clears throat> well, I'm here. Yeah. So how to yeah. get how to get. From the head down to the heart. This is what um, this is what uh, you know. Eric really and and Darwin Shaw encouraged me a lot <clears throat> in this. And it's not that the mind goes down to the heart; it's the awareness gets unplugged from looking through the mind and the awareness comes down and becomes aware of the feelings and emotions. And you become more attracted to following feelings and emotions than ra rather than thoughts. And that is, but what can I say? Um, there's a lot of pain and hurt in the heart. That's why a lot of people don't want to go down there and stay there. But there's also joy 
and richness and empathy and compassion. All the beautiful qualities are down there, but <clears throat> there's a lot of debris <laughs> down there. A lot of hurt and wounds, self, uh, uh, fear, anxiety, there, it's all there. <clears throat> so to be able to stay down at the heart level <clears throat> is very, very slow process. But uh, I'll just give you a Namita. If <clears throat> if I say something that hurts your feelings, say that'll hit. It'll hit your heart, and almost immediately you'll go up into your head and say, "Oh, right. no, I, you know, I'm not going to be around this guy. This guy's dangerous. I don't like to be around this guy." Already, that that we've left the the hurt and gone up to the head. So this means you got to bring the consciousness down, the awareness down, and stay with the hurt. And that's an uncomfortable thing to do, to have to be aware. I mean, I'm telling you, I spent 20 years at the level of my heart, and it was just broken glass, broken shards of glass, just wounds. <clears throat> But it's well worth planting your flag down at the level of the heart, you know, and to be able to stay there, make that your base of operations. Almost everybody on earth, their base of operations is their head. So Eric said to bring your consciousness down to the, and, and if you can keep it down at the heart level, it's a different life. That doesn't mean that it's all nice and smooth and everything, because like I say, there's so much wound and hurt and and anxiety and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want I told you I've told you I've spent once once I spent four months just tracking the anxiety at my heart level, in and behind my work and everything. I was fascinated, focused on the anxiety, but. I was I was down here. I wasn't trying to figure out. Well, why am I anxious? Why is this thing? And I I just go for the raw emotion, following the raw emotion, and not bringing the mind down and thinking about it. That was my. That's what I gathered. Can this be applied to emotion like fear? Say that again. Sorry. Go ahead. Can this Namita. be applied to any emotion? <clears throat> yeah, I emotion. said, can this be applied to any emotion like fear, example? Fear, fear, anger, desire, uh, greed, uh, sh uh, uh, all the feelings, the emotions and feelings. But that's that's just the that's the 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 that's the lower stage. I mean, that's the lower emotions, but then behind them are, are where the divine qualities start to flow in directly from Baba at the deeper level of the heart. But if you got to get down to the heart itself, even if, even if it's very uncomfortable, but eventually the awareness moves deeper and deeper to the heart of hearts. And that's where the divine qualities of empathy, forgiveness, gratefulness, anytime you're feeling those, you are at the deeper, the deepest level of your heart, right next to Baba. Patience, beautiful. humor, kindness, um, generosity, those are all, those are the divine qualities, and those make being, remaining in the heart attractive. Uh, but it's, but sometimes you got to go down and get stuck with your fears and your anxieties and yeah jeff you just answered the that question or the, yeah earlier when i was saying to merge the stream of whatever strong sensation you're having with with the divine that divine um i don't know what you call it it's like a i find it to be like a surrendering like i can't hold on to this pain it's so heavy and so immense and so confusing. I've ran through this a million times. And I can't find my way out of it. And now I lay my heart 
at your feet. I literally just cannot hold on to this. And it's and I think when you're speaking, it reminds me of that surrender of that moment of of just kind of dissolving that heaviness or whatever those things are, especially it particulars like for me, I'm working with lust and I'm working with anger and I'm working with these specifics and then merging them into that stream of longing, for example, with lust yeah. or, or desire, or even wanting, I don't mean just lust like sexual, I mean desire for things to be different than they are. Desire yeah. for me to be somewhere, <laughs> sitting somewhere else and talking to someone else or doing something else all the time. You know, I have that, that tendency. <laughs> I'm noticing the more I get quiet and dropping in, and it's a very painful process of, of ancient survival mechanism because it's like i can't be here because i'm not safe or i don't i don't know what's going on here so i just, I, it's i have that that quality to want to keep moving and keep things be different and if you merge that into that longing for me that longing of wanting like of he is all of it he's the point i'm this, the, i'm here now for this for you for you not for anything else and when you when i focus in on that get very sincere then it starts to break apart who i think i am and what i think i'm doing and it, and dropping into that place that you're talking about that that those yeah. deeper qualities start to emerge naturally like the compassion for myself and for others and so yeah. and so you know yeah i mean that's who we really are and yeah but uh to get that movement from the uh the the less desirable feelings to the those deeper divine qualities, you know. And any time we can do it, uh, eventually you get addicted. <clears throat> you don't to like to go up in. No. Oddly enough, there's a state of kind of no mind where you you don't have much in the way of thoughts, but you can still think. You're just not you're not having this ticker tape of ticker tape of thoughts going by I mean most people they got thoughts going by all the time you know like mosquitoes you know it you get out of that <clears throat> but it's following the raw emotion without interpreting it without um, I mean when I followed anxiety for four months uh, uh, I became friends with it so it doesn't really bother me that much you know it's like a you know, it's like, um, I don't know what I would say. It's it's uh, it's like a pain in my back. I don't take it that personally. But you saw the difference, right? You saw the difference of when you started and, and you continue continuing. Maybe at first you got into it and a little, a little toe in the pool of anxiety was like, ah, it's really painful to sit. And, I, and you only spent five minutes and then you started spinning. 20 minutes and then longer and longer until yeah. you started to even you, you know when you get those insights that you kind of get the whole it's like in a flash in a snap of a finger you even get that this is a function of just the whole picture of it you, i don't know you, you know what i mean it's like you just get a flash of like both the sensation of it and also the insight that this is what what it's doing how it's playing out you get you can't really explain it with words yeah. you don't really <clears throat> You don't really t explain it to yourself even it's just an understanding like oh and you can let it go even more because you see it more clearly yeah you know i i should say this that <clears throat> that our emotions and our feelings and everything are really <clears throat> they're really beyond the physical but they interface with the body so that makes it possible to track them in other words, your body doesn't lie. You know, if you can tune into your body, you 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 can kind of know how you're feeling. If you get, you know, <clears throat> so it's it's. Um, I mean, Baba has made it that way so that anxiety is a little bit lower than anger. Anger's <laughs> a different place. You know, I mean, they're all, they're in different places in the heart area. Jeff, when you yeah. say about the heart level and the uh, mind level, uh, so this is what I'd learned and from you only many years back and I'd kind of practiced. 
what I've seen is that you get a choice, you get an option, like which level should I put myself and operate on? See, I've seen that when when I'm with when I'm I'm usually with people, my friends, and everywhere in the Baba world or something. It's it's much of at the heart level. But when I work at my workplace or something, if I'm in an official meeting, I take it to my mind level. That's where I operate from there because that's what is needed over there. Yeah. Uh, because I can't be from the heart level. Things won't move. So I have to go to mind level. But then it gives a choice. It gives a choice like now where should I operate from? So this is kind of a choice that we get. And when you put your consciousness towards your heart, you're a total different human which you're operating, and it it's, it gives a you 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 are able to have empathy, compassion, and all that, and then you operate from there. So it's it's kind of this is an important thing, like, and it's a it's a whole lot of practice. Yeah. It's a practice that how I, get, I mean, getting to heart level and operating. A, you can operate it at a. a, at a a mind, mental level, but still be in your heart. That's all, that's possible. <clears throat> um, yeah. And uh, but I see Yasmin has got her hand. She oh, oh there she's up there. Okay, Yasmin yeah. has a question. Yeah, yeah. Jai Baba. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to know that I know you always say concentrate on the heart, on the heart. But if that is the case, why why are the Sahasra Chakra and the Agna Chakra above the heart? Chakra? What, don't you need don't you need the light of those chakras to process all these raw <clears> emotions <throat> of uh, whatever hatred <clears throat> anger jealousy lust greed i mean you need those you need those chakras too the other the other chakras you're saying <clears throat> yeah the well, light of those chakras i mean if well, you concentrate you're saying concentrate on anxiety and con i mean if you do that it's it's torture you're just fueling you're just fueling those emotions instead of uh, processing them and getting out of them. Yeah. <clears throat> well, there's another whole part of this, which is to give those uh, feelings and emotions to Baba. That's another whole uh, part of the equation. I, I haven't gotten into that, but giving things to Baba, anything that at the heart level, that's the fastest way. To, but that's uh, that's another whole discussion. How how to give those feelings and emotions and thoughts to Baba. <clears throat> and uh, I, you know, sometime I'll, I'll tell you about how Darwin Shaw kind of uh, uh, kind of in his very low key way taught us how to give give our interior to Baba. That's a <clears throat> well. That is a good question, Jeff. Like, why the heck would we want to focus in on these things? What are we doing? Maybe we're all. Maybe we're the loonies. Well, I'd like to say, it's like if you don't know where you're. I mean, otherwise you're kind of a victim <laughs> of your emotions. You know, why did I? Ye why did I yell at that person? You know. <clears throat> If you go down into the the emotion, you can kind of get more at the root of of where it comes from, so you gain a little control over it. You know, otherwise, I think I gave the figure last time of effort and grace. <clears throat> you lift up the hood of the heart, and then you can see what uh, the mechanics of it. So you can head when a lot of negativity is coming in here you can bring some positive force in there to kind of head it off, you know, and then you can draw a love to kind of dissolve the whole thing. There, there's, <clears throat> there are all these streams or uh, currents inside and you, you kind of get a little bit more control of those things. So you're not just a victim. You're not just driving down the, 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 the highway burning oil and, you know, your timing belt is way off and then you say, well, that's the way, that's, that's life. You know, you can get in there and, and repair some of these things with, with Baba. <clears throat> anyway, right, yeah. so in, so other, just wor in other words, this, sorry, go ahead, Lenny. Yeah. You just tell, no, I just had a thought. You just tell this, this negative emotions taking the back seat. Yeah. You know, sit in the back. <laughs> I'm in the front. I'm driving this car. <laughs> yeah. You just sit in the back and be quiet. Don't bother me. <laughs> well, in other words, you're not you're not looking 
for all of the terrible things in your mind and hunting them and making and inviting all these things right you're 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 working with what's present with what's there in that present moment and if you're effort it's it's like the effort and the grace if, if you're efforting in some regard to to remember him and to give him these things then these things naturally <clears throat> arise or you actually find yeah. yourself having been functioning in a state of anxiety yeah. or anger for quite a bit of time on unbeknownst to yourself until you really look <clears throat> i think that's yeah. one, i don't know but, I don't, that's yeah. the only reason i do it yeah, that is one question well. I, and then yeah. you have to make an effort to get the grace you know work on yourself and then baba gives the grace you know the grace yeah. comes from baba yeah but you need to make an effort you know yeah to be on, yeah. to to look at the light to just turn our heads to the light <laughs> well that yeah someone well that's that, what really. i'm doing you know? i'm working a lot with with gratitude now gratitude okay. is making such a difference in my life yeah you know be <clears throat> grateful for my shoes that i wear for my shower for my bed <laughs> yeah no that's for one that of the plant divine... that i just planted in my backyard you know in my garden yeah. that's the it's such a make it such since it is in pandemic that i don't have much to do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i start being grateful for everything yeah, yeah. Well, and the uh word, and Lanita, it makes a you... big difference you know the so word... the light just come oh. in you know the word the grateful. light Lanita, okay go ahead word... jeff oh. i'm listening oh go the ahead. Word grateful the, gr the word grateful gratefulness is the response the human response to grace the human response to grace gratefulness Great. wow. is 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 the our reception of his grace creates gratefulness in us they're from the same same root so this is why jeff or you you're quoting uh, from some uh, from somebody or this is your thought or how is it it comes from what's that so this great gratefulness is a re human response to grace well the, the i mean that's just the etymology if you okay. look up <clears throat> mm -hmm. gratis freely given <clears throat> yeah mr jefferson yeah uh, in your honor tonight, since I attended your whole Wait, chat, me? I, <laughs> I translated a uh, another hafiz for you. Oh, good. <clears throat> May I share it? It's fresh off the press, but it probably could use refinement. <clears throat> yeah, we're all ears. <clears throat> hey, Baba. I have no other shelter in the world than your doorstep. There is no other place for my head other than this. When the enemy draws his sword, I drop my shield. Our arrow is nothing but sighs and moans. Why should I turn my back on the ruined neighborhoods? For me, there is no turning back toward the world. If the world throws fire upon the harvest of my life, let it burn. To me, it is worth no more than straw. I am the slave of the playful glance of that lofty statured cedar, who from the intoxication of his status does not need to look at anyone. Be not in pursuit of harming others. Other than this, you may do anything. On our path of tariqat, there is no sin other than this. Slow down your passage, O king of the land of the virtuous. There are many on your path awaiting to tell you their laments. The eagle of tyranny has taken over the whole town. 
the bow of reclusiveness and the arrow of size. Oh, wait. Um, there is no, okay, come on, Gush, Gush uh, There is no arrow of, the. there is no bow of reclusiveness and the arrow of size. Let me make that change. In other words, our defense against the tyranny is nothing but moans and sighs. Yeah. And being reclusive. It's very appropriate for us now. Yeah. <clears throat> I see a trap on the path in every direction. Thankfully, I have no protection from the snare of your hair. If I block its passage, what is my solution? This unbridled heart has no other place to go. Do not surrender your heart to any hair and beauty mark. These works are not within the capability of any black hearted robber. Jay Baba. Where's uh, Jay Baba? <clears throat> but uh, you, you didn't have Hafiz's word at the end there, his name? Uh, I probably am too sleepy to put his name in there. Um, Chazine Yedel Hafez Bezolfo Chale. Oh, Hafez. <laughs> oh, Hafez, do not surrender your heart to any hair and beauty mark. These works are not within the capability of any black hearted robber. In other words, don't trust your precious heart and surrender and love to a fake guru or to an idol. <clears throat> I'm reminded of the line from a Rumi where he says, a lover of God is a wound without a shield. Mm. A wound without a shield. Beautiful. My gosh, where did you pull that one out of? I hadn't heard that one before. <laughs> <Jeff>. <laughs> you hear these things because <clears throat> you're on the lookout. That's great. For... <clears throat> hey, Jeff, we got uh, two questions to end with, if you like. Yeah. Uh, somebody, some people have sent things in the chat. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this one comes from. Priya, and I, I forgive me if you can definitely add on to this if I'm not saying your question correctly, please correct me. Uh, I, I, so it's about this people holding on to remembering Baba in their, in their entire life, in their last breath, and wanting to get out of the cycle of life and death. And she's wondering where that, that deep yearning comes from and if we really believe that Baba is within and around us all the time why do we have such a strong desire to escape this life um, and let's see if there's anything else I can read from that I, I, I guess that covers it that covers it from my end is there anything you want to add Priya <clears throat> yeah why um <clears throat> Well, are we trying to escape this illusion and are we going into another bigger illusion? <clears throat> well, I would say, suppose you want to, you're addicted to drink, alcohol. <clears throat> it's, uh, you want to get out of this, you know, you want to get out of this addiction. You know, I mean, life is miserable. You're, you're tied to this addiction. But once you overcome this addiction, life is beautiful. In other words, mm. it can you want to get out of it when it's miserable, <clears throat> but once you once you either detach from the misery or you get through the misery, you will want to you want will want to live for Baba. I would say. <clears throat> In other words, you think you want to get out, but if everything was kind of if the if the heaviness that surrounds you if the 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 overcast skies of your consciousness were suddenly clear and you saw the beautiful sunlight you would say hey wait maybe maybe i don't want to get out of here this is really beautiful 
it, it will be like that. I mean, uh, over time, things start to clear up and life becomes more and more beautiful. Doesn't necessarily mean that the suffering isn't still there, but you, you, you get addicted to you get addicted to the expansiveness of love. <clears throat> so a lot of people want to get out, <clears throat> but that, that's not the real getting out. <clears throat> In other words, you know, when you're over, when, it, when, when it's overcast, when it's been overcast for days and days, you, you're dying for the sunlight. But once once you once the the once the the clouds lift, <clears throat> you. Baba says that there are people on the sixth plane of consciousness, that don't even want to leave. <laughs> you know, it's so beautiful. I mean, he has to reach over, and yank them out of creation. Wow. So, <clears throat> you one day you may find yourself in that state. <laughs> You know, and then there's another reason. The Mondali stayed for another reason. They want to help Baba out as much as they can, and they would want yeah. to put off realization as long as they can so that they can be here of some help to Baba. They don't care how much suffering they undergo. <clears throat> you know, that's a different, that's a... a, a uh, 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 quite a different approach. Is there I anything you wanted to add to that, Priya? I think I'm going to stay with it. <laughs> like, what? I think I'm going to stay with it. I, <clears throat> it's like, uh, you know, you believe in the divine and, and you feel his love flowing through, you know? I mean, for me, <clears throat> Knowing about Baba and visiting Maribad was one thing, but I think sitting in the circle of, you know, Baba lovers was the most tangible taste of, you know, his nectar. Be it his words, be it was flows through everybody. But I think just that repetition of remember Baba in your last breath and and that's it. And I wondered if, I mean, sure, since Baba has said it, it's, you know, it's the truth. But I was wondering if isn't that a greater illusion? Because the more and more I find myself um, getting attached to Baba, and I use the word attached because I think it's still a, a component of my head, you know, more of here mm -hmm. than really here, that I find myself escaping from the world. But in order to live the life and obey him the way he has asked us to obey him, you have to remain rooted in this life. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like there is a conflict between feeling rooted in this life and loving people and really using all your gifts and doing all that you can creatively, emotionally, you know, really like versus just hoping for that day when, you know, this whole cycle ends and this is it. And a part of me also wonders, he must be so alone because, you know, it's just him. And, 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 and because of the separation, there is something. And, and I wonder what it, I mean, but that's just more like a romantic idea of what it's, what it would be like to, you know, when the separation disappears mm -hmm. and there is a union and the two becomes one and then it's just quiet and silence and nothing and mm -hmm. i think it was yeah. just no that's beautiful um the uh what can i say the <clears throat> you know uh money money baba's sister said we know that Baba, Baba is always with us. We know that. He's always here. But it becomes complete when we're with him. And when we, 
You, I, I mean, now, this is just my feeling. Baba is there. He's just waiting for all of us. And it feeds him if we leave our little melodrama and come over and, and, and hang out with him. That means everything to him. <clears throat> and what and it there isn't the same it doesn't have to end you uh, when when you come over to, and you're with him uh you don't ever want it to end <clears throat> then you're not but at the same time you have your life it, it's very hard to work out what how to be in the world and how to be with baba i had a i had that's a a big, big, um, I had to work that out. How to be <clears throat> in this world and also be with him. How much should I be in the world? How much should I be with him? Uh, that was, it gets ironed out eventually. It's, that's, that's a, a that's a, um, what can I say? That's a whole transformative thing. And it's hard, you know. How should I, I used to wonder how how much should I be with these people, and how much should I be with Baba, you know? I mean, I, I really, I mean, it was like I was troubled by that. But eventually, it 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 works out. Can I say something, Jeff? Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, this definitely is something that you know I. Um, it came along with me on the path, this idea of uh, the world versus Baba and Hafez talks about it too. Um, I think Baba wants us to forego our attachment to the world rather than being in the world. So yeah. being the old saying, be in the world, but not of it. Yeah. So um, in the back, way back of your mind or forefront, to remember that it is not the reality, uh, it is illusion. And this the purpose of the illusion is to get us to that reality. That is the purpose of this creation, mm -hmm. is to get us to that consciousness. So knowing that and imbibing that, then your life becomes a symphony, a dance toward that, that unity. Um, not not a dredge, not something you have to shun or get away from, but something that you dance with joy with Baba toward that that goal. And knowing with conviction that he is the doer in you, pulling you along. And to just yeah. surrender and trust in that and put your hand in his hand and let him lead you. Yeah, I mean that's part of that work that we were talking about with Priya. I mean it, that it working, getting those things all aligned, and it, it will get aligned. Baba will align that, <clears throat> so that it all happens pretty naturally. But you start out, you know, you, you start out, you know, some things are here and some things are there, and eventually they they all get integrated. And, and it, it kind of happens before you even know how it happened. Like, wow, yeah. you know, going back and reading my poems that I used to write three, four, five years ago, I couldn't write those poems now because they, you know, I have changed. My perceptions have changed. My, my world yeah. has completely changed. I, I know when, when I first got into Baba, I had three days in which I saw everything as a mirage, as a dream, and it was awful. I, I mean, because my heart would not invest in a, in a dream, in an illusion. Baba had to convince me to, you can still, he didn't say not to love in the world of illusion, you know, we can express love in the world of illusion. Uh, and he had he had to convince me before my heart would go forward to give to illusion, to express love in illusion. That's a that's a. I mean, all these things are are. 
or take a bit of working out. Really, I mean, it's it's not like you just kind of waltz in and you know how to uh, play the piano. You have to do the scales and then you learn the chords and then you, I mean, it's, and then pretty soon you can improvise on the piano and do all these beautiful pieces. But that, but that Bob is gonna make that happen. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks. We have uh, we have one last question from Ganesh. Yeah. Ganesh, would you like to yes. say your question? Yeah. Yes, actually, this was like going back to when we were discussing the heart level and the head level. So one thing that this has been my observation and it's been like kind of observation which I can share. The more I was going towards the heart level, uh, it's like, like becoming sensitive to people's energies. And this is what I've seen. Like we become very sensitive to people's energies and somebody, somebody's negative and all that, that you really feel it, even though they don't speak much or anything. And there was a time when I didn't know how to deal with it, but I could sense those. And this was happening when I was going more to the heart level and try, trying to operate. I don't know if this has happened to others, but this was a kind of challenge I'd been facing and I still like, and I don't know how to like deal with it. So that has been, that's, that's, that's what I wanted to share. Me meaning when your heart is open, then you you're much more sensitive to the negativity of others, mm, uh, the attitudes. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's, I tell you, <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's why people sometimes don't like to go into their heart because you feel all of this. But in the end, you would rather feel the negativity or where people are at and suffer it than to be up in a, a mental comfort zone and not feel any of it you know what i mean that's the that's the, you're in the dilemma do i want to just go yeah. up into the up on the mind level and feel comfortable up there or miserable down below in the heart i i always feel i i my thing was i'd rather feel miserable in the heart mm -hmm. than comfortable up in the head and, and then how do you deal with it? Eventually yeah, that so. miserable in the heart uh, is bound to turn into compassion in the heart. Yeah. Yeah. It turns into a lot of beautiful things. Compassion. I definitely but relate to that, Ganesh. Those... Go ahead, yeah, Alan. I've... But no, I just yeah. I was just and, saying and I definitely you feel you, man. That? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do yeah, with me the too. negativity? Yeah. The negativity will make you, uh, for me at least, the negativity will make you say, Baba, 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 <laughs> Baba. <laughs> I mean, you have to come out with a counter, a Baba counter response to the negativity. I mean, in a way, they're doing you a service, even though it's not, you don't like it at all. They make you have to come up with an, a Baba counter response. Mm. And, because and sometimes that, you feel the negative and you and you and you don't have anything to do with but but you're just feeling it. You can't do anything with it and you're just feeling that. So that does happen. Yeah. But I mean they they uh, they kind of force you into a remembrance of Baba at a level that you weren't planning to <laughs> to do when you before you <laughs> went into the room <laughs> it's yeah thanks <laughs> it's 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 the but after a while you appreciate the fact that these people do make you think of baba in a in a to actually get into gear with baba and you know what i mean oh. and yeah. These like are all, I mean, th these make for a very harmonious and rich life. All of the, the work that, that is done at this level. Mm. You, you I will like be... your uh, terminology of getting in gear with Baba. That yeah. resonated with me. <laughs> Put when, Baba I would be, when I'm around someone that's on drugs, even, um, even, um, what do you call them? Uh, pharmaceutical drugs i mean you know baba i just you know ba, i mean baba's name just starts uh firing up in me 
you know, I have to kind of uh, neutralize that. Otherwise, I get it all over me. You mean uh, when you're around people who are taking medication, you can feel it? Even e certain, uh, certain the medication, but uh, but uh, the psychedelic drugs especially. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> that, that you have to work, but, but it's not their fault. But you you got to work. <clears throat> you can't get and kind of just. Uh, um, Put put yourself on cruise control up here, you know. Mm -hmm. So is that sort of you're working with Baba through you for them, for that uh, for that <laughs> negativity that you get from them? Is that what well, you're trying to say? It, it 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 could it could result in that, <clears throat> but it's basically you're trying to get the interior your own interior in a way that in a place that you that you feel is rich and has baba in it you know uh you can think of it as service but i'm thinking about it is just getting my my inner atmosphere uh to a harmonious kind of a strong place now, if it helps that other person with the negativity, uh, so much the better. Yeah. But, well, if their if their vibes affected you, your vi vibes are bound to affect them. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> when you're talking about this, just can, I, can I quote working strongly? Oh, yeah. oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, Jay. can I quote uh, a quote from Kabir? Yeah, He's, good. Uh, Kabir ha teri jopdi galkatte ke paas jiski karni hoi vare tu kyon rahe udas. Kabir says that your house is close to the house of a butcher. And what, why you become sad? His karma, he will, <laughs> he will face it, his karma. You don't become sad. Yeah. <clears throat> no, all of this it. stuff, uh, it, it's, it, it's really a beautiful, I mean, as time goes on, I feel Baba's really created a very compassionate world. It doesn't seem like it, but it's very compassionate because we're all growing toward that great divine love. You know, it's, it's not fast enough for Americans, but you know, uh -huh. slow. <clears throat> but hey, we got, it, we, yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yes. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say, yes, Jasmin. Jeff, 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 Jeff Farishtal. Yeah, I just wanted oh. to thank you, Jeff Farishtal, all of you for uh, throwing the light, and it's, it's really helpful. What you're yeah. Saying. yeah. Yeah, this is all. And I think to have fun with it, you know, rather than beat yourself up about it, you know, I think VJ has fun with all of this. <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> you know, you'd like to be a better sure. person. You'd like to not be hassled by this thing or that thing. But <laughs> you get a yeah. sense of humor about it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe we should. Uh, so, Namita, did, we got from... The head to the heart a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> but you know, you know, I I don't know if this is probably going to now stretch it for all of us, but I still and I don't know if I would call myself thick. Maybe I would, you would, but I really think that even now I kind of find it um, not entirely comprehensible when you say that you know, you, you, you kind of, you, you tracked your anxiety and, uh, you know, you, you kind of followed it for four months. So maybe you would like to explain it again another time, if not today, but yeah, when everybody's there. I mm -hmm. can see most of the people have dropped out now and it's pretty late yeah. for you. So. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, and, and like I say, there's the tracking it and then there's the giving it to Baba. You know, Darwin yeah. used to say, uh, <clears throat> you can't heal what you don't, the deeper the feeling, the deeper the healing. 
You can't heal what you don't feel. So feeling those things deeply uh, and, and then giving them to Baba, that's, that's, there's, a, that, there's a beautiful way of doing that. Because so that you can get rid of layers and layers of this stuff in Baba's ocean. Uh, yeah. You know, Jeff, I have a lot of people who, who I know personally are suffering from fear and anxiety. And I, I mean, and they do not follow Meher Baba. Like, I mean, if you tell me, yeah. I can understand. But when I speak to them, I'm like, I just have to help them. And I don't know, you know, if I, you know, I don't know what would I mean. I can't give them the option of giving it to Baba, but I can definitely... <clears throat> If I understand myself, how am I supposed to stay in my heart and follow my emotions? Then maybe, you know, I can work with helping other people. Yeah, you'd be surprised. People who are anxious and, and, and all of that are going to feel very heartened by your presence. You know, you're, you're going to be solid. And their, you know, their their way, their life is wavering, and there's a solid person. That solid wholesomeness is such so much help. Yes. You know, because if it if you can do it, they know they can do it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You said and, it, Jeff. Yeah. I just read in that book, The Boys, with where Baba said. Um, somebody had asked a similar question in the 20s to Baba, and he said, you start with yourself first. You start yeah. with yourself first. Because they were, they were saying, like, I'm, I want to help all these people, and I want to go, and then he's, they, that was just the very clear yeah. order. Like, uh, I, you know. Which and eventually, is and eventually you find that everybody is really inside of you. Right. Uh, with a capital Y, but that's, <clears throat> that, that's that's PhD that's a, level, right? That's another yeah, <laughs> I post. Yes, <laughs> Jeff. Yeah. No, but Baba is doing. He, I tell you, I really feel like he is doing such great things in us, e even though <laughs> even True. though it's painful and disturbing, and there's a lot of uncertainty. Oh, I had a card. Let me see if I can find this. <gasps> the Jeff cards. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, this uh, this is, and then then we'll end it because it's uh, twelve thirty. But this is Francis Brabazon. This is kind of worth um, pondering. How serene are the stars? How disturbed is man? But man's disturbance pleases the beloved. For it shows he has lost his self-assurance. I'll read that again. Read that. Yes, That's please. Nice. How serene are the stars, how disturbed is man. But man's disturbance pleases the beloved. For it shows he has lost his self-assurance. He's ready to learn. Yeah, he's vulnerable. You know, I mean, we don't like to be vulnerable. We'd like to be self-assured. <clears throat> but that's part that gets that moves into kind of that mental comfort. And you know, I mean, I don't like to grow. Baba knock on wood. I mean, it's disturbing to have your borders expanded farther out. You know, to right. move from a from a, a a nice house to a mansion, and then then they throw you out of the mansion, and you're out in the out of doors. Right. It's just. I mean, when we have self assurance, we don't remember him much. Yeah. Yep. No. So anyway, let's um uh Jay. Yeah. Oh, Jay, uh, oh, Jay is is. <laughs> Nasreen, are you still alive? It looks like it. it looks like it. Okay. And Mef, <laughs> we haven't seen Mef, but are you still uh, still awake there, Mef? Up. 
Marsha, I, we put some people to sleep. What about Paula Roper? Hi, Jeff. Oh, good. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. I put a I put a in the chat how much these chats and effort and grace has helped me over the last few months. Oh, I watch yeah. all of them. I can't always be on them, but I yeah. watch all of them, and it's just really um really really been a big help. Yeah. Mm. Well, don't hesitate to to chime in, Paula, because you 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 really operate right from the heart. Well, this has been a tough one. Yeah. And but and it and it's hard to know how to kind of reintegrate into a conversation. Yeah. Well, no, no. I never no know pressure. what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, no pressure, but you, mm. you, you live right from the heart, and of course that's, that's, that's the painful, but deepest way, you know. And Dinesh. <clears throat> We've got Gustaji up there. <laughs> <laughs> and Yasmin, anyway, and Marsha Maltz, I mean, Chicago's here. And Jay, we see Jay there. Seattle. Seattle. And, oh, hey, we lost somewhere in the web process. We we lost uh, <clears throat> uh, Mayor Prasad. <laughs> Fell asleep. I like your kids. That's and Marinaz yeah. is Marinaz still there? Oh yes. Oh wow. Absolutely. Listening oh. to every single word. Oh well, don't hesitate <laughs> to chime in. You have. <clears throat> we're all. We we're, we're all uh, facets of the same uh, diamond. Yeah, I want. Can I say hello to Marinaz? Yeah. Marinas, you're Raj's sister. I am. And who is speaking? Yeah. Right now? Pa Paula Roper. I met you years ago when you, we were really young <laughs> then. Um, <laughs> and you had just come to Seattle and you were in school. But anyway, I just wanted to say hello to you. I haven't seen Raj in a long time because of COVID. But, I can't um, know I'm, I'm Raj's son in law. Oh, yeah. I know you, Jay. I've met you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Oh, and those are your oh, those are yours and Mary's babies. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Wow. Oh yeah. We don't That's see him beautiful. much either. He's kind of in seclusion these days. We don't even see him much ourselves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rogers, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember you, unfortunately. Oh, and... that's all right. <laughs> but if I do, if I see your face, um, maybe sometime. Yeah. Well, I don't even recognize my face anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so when you saw me long, um, I think I saw you a few, few days ago, or when was it? In which one of these Zoom meetings was it that I saw you? It's not the first time I see your name. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. Um, uh -huh. But just looking at your name didn't, didn't click anything. Mm. So yeah, maybe... One day I'll remember. It's I'm getting right. old, and yeah. uh, poor I'm my... older. Yeah, I'm older than you. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Jeff's got to go. Yeah. Hey. Well. Um. Wonderful to see all of you. I mean, really, don't hesitate to, to you know, chime in and everything. But these are all, like I say, these are. I think it's. I always found it very helpful to know that a lot of the stuff. And I was going through. Everybody else was going through, <laughs> in uh, you know, in this one degree or another. So you know, sometimes you think, well, you're the only one that's feeling distant from Baba, or you're the only one that's uh, having trouble with your boss, or you know, whatever. And <laughs> you come here, you can find out everybody is about as dysfunctional as you are. <laughs> 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 broken furniture broken anyway, furniture anyway much uh aj what's your what, what's your son's name this one's ryan three years old ryan hi ryan the other one is oh. cameron a everybody let's wave to ryan say they're waving hi ryan hi ryan, hi, ryan. Hi. can you see us <laughs> they're saying hi. hi ryan hi <laughs>
Oh, he's so time. cute. They know all this. Okay, anyway. Uh, we'll see you uh, next 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 week. Yes. yes. And, uh, yeah, wonderful. See you, Ryan. <laughs> see, he said. Since yeah. See you. And, uh, yeah, and Ferris Day, keep those. Anytime you come on, even if you come on and read a Hafiz and go back to, and go to sleep, that's perfectly fine. I may just come here and do my translations on your late nights. Yeah, that was great. You're so inspiring. <laughs> okay, folks. I Thank you, leave. Jeff. This is great. Thank you. Yeah. Day, Baba. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Jeff. Day, Baba.